Like we talked about before, organisms will fight for resources and for nutrients and for their place in the environment. This place or the role that an organism takes up in the environment, both the habitat and what the organism does. So basically everything that it needs, everything that it does, everything that it represents, its place within the environment is called a niche or a niche, depending on what you want to say. But basically, this is very important because this is what animals will fight for, really, for their place in the environment. So look at this picture here. You see there's a lot of green on the right side uh, in front of the rock, right? But on the side of the rock, there's more yellow. And then over here, there's a hint of a little bit of yellow on the front of the rock as well. It's almost as if, if, as if, if there wasn't any green in the front, perhaps some of the areas which are green could be covered with yellow. But there's not because there's green is over there. The same same kind of principle you can see here a lot more green than that yellow because perhaps the green likes to live in certain circumstances and the yellow might want to live in the same places but the green outcompetes him both are trying to fight for their own niche in the environment now there might be some circumstances where they don't necessarily fight for example the green might not like this side of the rock here maybe this side faces the wind or maybe it faces uh, has more moisture because it's facing the wind so it's, it's blasted by water a little bit more and this species does better if it's a little more moist so it doesn't really like the sides over here where it never gets blasted by the waves or the wind as often and so it, it tries to avoid the side but maybe the yellow species uh, does better there and could also do better on the other area but not as well as the green one does by the way we're talking about lichen here lichen is a neutralistic relationship that exists between uh, fungus and algae so it's like really two organisms together which are doing this but regardless this lichen that lives in the front or in the side they're fighting for their role in the ecosystem they're fighting for their niche now this also brings the idea of the competitive exclusion principle now the idea is that perhaps one organism prefers a more moist environment that's not too hot while another one performs a little more warm but not too moist so you see the difference there you have organism one and organism two but there is a chance that they could possibly overlap that there's a region where both of them can exist so who's going to exist there whoever out competes the other and that's the idea of competitive exclusion principle that no two organisms can occupy the same space or role in an environment and so they must fight each other out and whoever's best is going to survive so that's the whole idea of natural selection whoever's more adapted for that environment whoever's better suited for that environment will tend to survive wherever two tend to compete with each other but there's a lot of other areas where they don't compete so that's possible for them to coexist if they're not necessarily fighting for resources in every single case but if their niches are exactly the same what does that mean only one of them can survive at all. Do you understand what I'm saying? But another concept that's inter interesting about niche is that it's not just about moisture or just about temperature. It's not just two dimensions. In this graph, you only see moisture and temperature. It's a lot more than that. It's where do you live? It's who do you eat? Who eats you? What nutrients do you need? Do you need sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, oxygen? nitrates, phosphates, all the little details, all the biotic and abiotic factors that you see in an ecosystem will, will be have to be considered to actually describe what an animal's niche is or organism's niche is. That means that it's not unidimensional, not two-dimensional, it's a multi-dimensional way of looking at niches. Understand what I'm saying? There, for you to describe the role of a species in its ecosystem, you have to look at multiple factors all at once. And no single species is the same for every single factor which means in most cases that you they can exist if they have areas where only them satisfy all of those factors but if there's a case where two things are fighting for resources then they will compete and only one can survive and if they fight for every single detail if they're the same in every single dimension only one of them can survive at all that's the idea of competitive exclusion principle now that's what's happening here most likely you see that the greens is competing against the yellow and the in the front over here the green seems to outcompete the yellow and therefore only the green exists but the yellow still gets to exist because it has areas which the green doesn't care for and that's the idea that I just described now here's an example of an experiment that also shows that uh, this is showing two types of paramecium which are protists in the laboratory and if you go the Aurelia by itself it will do fine if also you do the cow dautum by itself it will also do fine both can live in this little vial that you gave them, right? But if you put them both together, notice that the Aurelia will outcompete 
knockout datum. And that's because they're trying to fight for the same niche and then only one of them can survive. So that's the competitive exclusion principle. But notice that the population of, of, of caudatum did not completely die off. That means that there are some areas of that, of that little miniature ecosystem which the Aurelia doesn't care for. And then within those areas, the caudatum cares to live so he, can, he gets to still exist. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Hopefully you do. So niche is the role in the place of the organism within the environment. And that is dependent on a variety of factors. And sometimes animals' niches try to overlap. And when they do, they have to fight for resources. And if they overlap in every single way, they will have only one of them could possibly survive. And both in both cases, you're competing. And that's called the competitive exclusion principle. Now, this means that animals will be fighting for resources and splitting the resources in the environment. Notice, for example, on the top left here, there's several types of wobblers that, that live in this kind of pine tree over here. But notice that no single wobbler live exactly in the same place as the other one do. They kind of split the tree up. Like, I'll live in this area, you live in that area, I'll live in this area. So each of them will take a, certain, a different area of the tree. Now, does this mean that they can only live there? No. If one of the warblers probably went extinct, that means that another one that could possibly fit in that niche and it like that area as well could expand its territory. But they live where they live because that's where they can't be outcompeted and that's the best area for them to live. And so that way they will end up doing is separating the tree. The same thing you hear with the, see with the lizards, how some of them like to perch in the fences near the posts and the other one likes the shady branches of the trees. It depends on the kinds of behavior that or niche that they prefer the most. Now, does that mean they can only live there? No, but that means that the other ones are already occupied, so they stay where they are the best. That's kind of the idea of niche. And of course, you see another example there with the with the molluscs on the intertidal zone. So the idea here is that animals will, will split up the resources. It's called resource partitioning. They split the resources which are available in the ecosystem depending on where they're best for fit, fit for. So that means that there's a concept of uh, realized versus fundamental niche. The fundamental niche is everywhere where the animal could possibly be or where the organism could possibly live. You see this graph here that all the areas dotted in red represent the dispersal or where this animal could be within these two factors, which are here precipitation and temperature. So they could be anywhere in these two things, but it's actually only in the green area. So that's the difference between his fundamental niche, which is everywhere he could have possibly be, and his realized niche, which is where he actually is. How does that happen? Well, going back to the example I just briefly mentioned of the muscles on the intertidal zone, maybe the fundamental niche of one kind is that he could be everywhere along that the area from low tide to high tide. If there's another organism that's best suited for the low tide environment and out competes the the first one in that area then that means that the realized niche is going to be smaller than the fundamental niche he actually can be only in a smaller region and we also can automatically know that the the blue the new type of the balanus type there doesn't really like the high tide area because it's not out competing the 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 original for that or at that area the original out competes the blue Do you see what i'm saying this is the concept of realized versus fundamental niche. Hopefully this is clear. Now, the same thing we saw over there before. The realized niche of the green and the yellow are determining where they're going to be in the ecosystem. Now, this means there's going to be constant pressure for animals to adapt to a niches which are available in the environment. A great classical example of this is the Galapagos finches in, that Darwin studied in, in the process of developing his theory of evolution. And how from a common ancestor, they evolve into different kinds of finches because each ecosystem that on each different island put pressure for a different kind of beak because there were different kinds of food available. So the animals which had the adapt mutations which allowed them to survive better in those environments uh, became more common in those environments. And so over time, it's different kinds of finches developed, one in each island because of the different environments. So see how niches can change across time and this is all evolution and we'll talk more about this when we talk about evolution later in the year but I wanted to plug it in here for you to understand that niches are not these things which are frozen in time but that animals adapt as their environments change or as they move into different kinds of environment so the same thing is true if the environment actually uh, changes this, in the case we talked about was the case that they are going to different environments but what if the environment that they're in uh, changes so you have a species, and then the species gets separated from in two groups because of plate tectonics, for example. 
Now maybe on the second island or the second continent, things change and the environment is now different. Now a different species will start to evolve there. And if the, this process continues over time, that could lead to differentiation between the species. So niches are not these solid things in time. In fact, the niches can change depending on whether the animal adapts across generations through the process of evolution. And this could even happen if the animals coexist. This is a great uh, natural experiment that shows that. Uh, Fuliginosa and Fortis are two kinds of finches that actually live in the Galapagos Islands. Now, in interestingly enough, wherever they live by themselves in islands, for example, the island Los Hermanos, the, the beak death, which is the, how, how wide the beak is of, of the Fuliginosa, is very similar to the beak death of the Fortis. So you notice how the first two graphs show that they are on, around the same range. Now, they're, so that means that if they don't compete with each other, they, they pretty much have the same features. But on islands where they coexist, like the Santa Maria and the San Cristobal Island in the Galapagos, um, they were competing for exactly the same niche because their big depths were originally the same and that means that they would have to kind of uh, vouch for the same food because depending on how deep, how, the size of the beak, you're going to be better or worse at cracking certain kinds of nuts. But since now they're going to be coexisting on, the, on, the, on the last set of islands, they're going to compete. So what ended up happening is that there was a shift on both species away from each other. Look at that. The, they live together in that case. That's what a sympatric population is. Allo means different. Sim means the same. So in a sympatric population, they live in the same environment. Allopatric, they live in different environments. So you see, on the different environments where there was no competition, they pretty much stayed kind of the same range of niche. But where they had to compete with each other, they went away from each other and one became a smaller beak and the one became the bigger beak. So they could specialize in available niches and not have to compete with each other. So you see how this competitive exclusion principle is one of the driving forces of evolution because animals are forced to adapt to new environments as the environments change or to st adapt so that they don't have to compete with each other. So there's pressure from the environment to diversify. And that's why there's also so much variety in life because competition for niche causes that variety. I hope you understood that. Now, another important concept that goes along with this idea is that if the animal has a fundamental niche, which is its potential, that is larger than its actual realized niche, that means that it's possible for this animal to live in ecosystems which is not where it currently lives. This leads us to the idea of tolerance. For example, look at the kangaroo's distribution in Australia. He does, there is an area where he's more common than in other areas, but that doesn't mean that he can't spread out all over Australia depending on its level of tolerance. Now, of course, he's better fitted for specific areas, but that doesn't mean he can't be in several areas, just like you have kangaroos in zoos which are not in Australia because the animal is willing or able to tolerate conditions which are not its optimum conditions. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, that means that as the environment changes around the animal, the animal tends to migrate to where its, its optimal conditions are going to be. So this is going to help determine where animals live. So as the world conditions changes and, and, and things like that, the animals may be able to adapt depending on its, the breadth of its fundamental niche. But if the animal is very specific and it has a very narrow fundamental niche, it doesn't have a lot of tolerance and it will die very quickly if there are changes in the environment occur. This means that the greater diversity there is within the population, the better because the more uh, tolerance the, the species is going to have. Maybe one person in the population can handle the cold, but if somebody else can, this means the species can survive if it has, it's forced to deal with the cold environment. And that's what allows species to sometimes go to places where they're not ideally to live in. And in those places, the features which make them more likely to survive will become more common, which leads us to how species actually evolve. But remember, the concept of niche is the idea that organisms have a specific role or place in their environments, and that this place is determined based on their characteristics, so their levels of tolerance. And remember that niches is not just two characteristics, but it's multiple factors which help determine the animal's niche. Now, there's a fundamental niche, which is how far they can go, and a realized niche, which is how far they actually are. 
And the difference is sometimes competition with other organisms which try to fight for the same places in the environment. And they have to split the resources because of the competitive exclusion principle, which is the idea that when two animals are fighting for the same resources, the one that's best adapted for that circumstance will survive. Which means if two organisms are fighting for exactly the same niche in every single respect, they will inevitably one will kill the other out. But if they have areas where they don't compete with each other, then both can possibly exist. And that's important for evolution, it's important for ecology, and that's why you have to know everything there is to know about niche.